squalid, impoverished, remarkable, Kowloon walled city. Throughout the world, there are a great number of cities and slums of cities where people find themselves in crowded and tight living conditions, carving out a life for themselves and their families while crime and drug abuse run rampant. None of these places, however, are as unique as Kowloon Walled City was. In 1987, with an estimated 33,000 people residing within an area roughly six and a half acres in size, Kowloon Walled City was easily the most densely populated spot on the planet. Although the city was demolished between 1993 and 94, pictures and videos can still remind us of the dilapidation that people can live with and their incredible ability to adapt to their surroundings. Roughly a thousand years ago, a military outpost was set up in the area that would come to be the Walled City in order to manage the trade of salt and to defend the area against pirates. Little of note occurred for around 800 years until the First Opium War ended between China and the United Kingdom, and a treaty was signed which, among other things, converted Hong Kong Island into a crown colony under British rule. As a precaution, Chinese authorities decided to improve the military fort in Kowloon in order to prevent further British influence. One of the major improvements made was a defensive wall that enclosed the fort. Despite this, Hong Kong continued to fall into British rule, but an exception was made for the fort, letting the Chinese keep officials there as long as they didn't interfere with the British. This didn't last long, however, as the British suspected the Chinese of using the fort to aid a resistance movement. The fort was attacked at the end of the 19th century, and eventually fell under British control. The British had little interest in the walled city, however, and was considered a minor tourist attraction to see the few hundred people living there. In the 1930s, most of the city's buildings were demolished by Hong Kong authorities, and while Japan occupied Hong Kong during World War II, they demolished the bordering wall of the city to provide material for the nearby airport. After Japan's surrender and the end of World War II, the British still controlled the area of the walled city, although the Chinese wanted to reclaim rights to it. By 1947, roughly 2,000 squatters were staying in the city, and after failing to drive them out, the British decided to mostly ignore the city and its residents. The lack of any form of government and law enforcement in the city led to a swift rise in crime and drug abuse. Brothels, gambling parlors, and opium dens began to fill the city, and various crime syndicates took control of the city. These organizations would largely run the city from the 1950s into the 1970s, when over 3,500 police raids were conducted in order to crack down on the rampant crime. By 1983, the police force declared that the crime rate was under control. It was also during this period that the city went through a relatively massive population growth, eventually housing over 30,000 people. Despite the large amounts of criminal activity taking place in the walled city, most of its residents lived lives similar to those outside of the city, albeit with a large lack of regulations. Eventually, however, the British and Chinese governments found the living conditions and state of the city to be intolerable and began to plan its demolition. Roughly $350 million was spent compensating the residents for their evictions, and some were forcibly removed from the city. Between March of 1993 and April of 94, the city was demolished and a park was built in its place. The Kowloon Walled City Park opened in 1995 and contains a number of monuments and buildings in an area slightly larger than the original city. Speaking on the city itself during its last 40 years of existence, there were roughly 300 buildings in the area, built no higher than 13 or 14 stories tall due to the nearby airport. The presence of the airport so close to the city caused serious noise pollution problems during its later years. The alleyways that filled the city were roughly between 3 and 6 feet wide, and an average apartment was 250 square feet. Since buildings were stacked tightly on top of one another, and the city was filled with drainage pipes, electrical wires, water tanks, 
signs, and refuse, very little natural light would reach the ground level. Residents fortunate enough to live near the top of the city could enjoy fresh air and sunlight on their roofs. Due to the confined nature of the buildings, it was possible for someone to cross from one end of the city to the other without ever touching solid ground. The lack of regulations and oversight allowed for dangerous living conditions for a variety of reasons. Many of the apartments and buildings in the city were built poorly, and the water that was pumped into the city was shared by the residents through an incredibly complex web of thousands of pipes. Electrical wiring was also handled by the residents, and it was often necessary to conserve electricity in order for the water pipes to work efficiently. Doctors, dentists, and other businesses would operate unlicensed and with no regulations. Meat would often be prepared on the floor with no health concerns, and dog meat was often served. Despite these issues, the city's residents managed to carve out an existence. Cooperation and community was necessary, and even though they were living in extraordinary circumstances, they attempted to live ordinary lives. Children still received what education they could and played on the rooftops, adults went about their business, and families lived mostly peaceful lives amongst the jungle of pipes and buildings. Many of them were quite upset when the demolition was announced, and argued that crime was low and they were happy. Regardless of whether or not the Chinese government should have demolished the walled city, it's undeniable that it was one of the most unique places to exist during modern history. Arguably more extraordinary than the city itself was the residents' ability to adapt to their living conditions. For now, the walled city is gone and only a park remains, but pictures and videos will always remind us of the unique, terrifying, and utterly impressive Kowloon Walled City.